Good day everyone! In this presentation, we will be discussing about the drugs acting on respiratory system. The drugs described in this presentation are those used for effects on mechanical and other functional aspects of the respiratory tract and are most commonly used in combinations. Their most frequent use in the respiratory system when ventilation is impeded has become distressing or has become so inadequate that abnormal blood gas concentrations are present. Antitussives The other term used for antitussives are either cough sedatives or cough suppressants. These are the agents which help in suppressing or relieving cough. Cough has a protective role mediated by medullary cough centers. And the goal of antitussive therapy is to decrease the frequency and severity of cough without impairing mucociliary defenses. There are two types of cough. These are the productive cough, which is accompanied by secretion of sputum, and non-productive cough or dry cough, which is not accompanied by secretions mainly due to persistent irritation in bronchi. One of the classification of antitussives based on site of action is the reflexly or peripherally acting antitussives. It depressed the tracheal and bronchial afferent sensory nerves and pulmonary stretch receptors and thus prevent their activation of medullary cough center. Bronchodilators are powerful peripheral antitussives because they relieve irritant receptor stimulation induced by mechanical deformation of the bronchial wall during bronchoconstriction. The example of this is the ephedrine. Other peripheral antitussives include demulsants like honey, mucokinetic agents, and hydrating agents. The other classification of antitussives is the centrally acting antitussives. It suppresses cough through direct depression of medullary cough center. Opioids are commonly used central antitussives. The centrally acting antitussives are classified as narcotic and non-narcotic drugs. The narcotic antitussives depress the cough center sensitivity to afferent stimuli. However, they can be associated with strong sedative properties as well as constipation when administered chronically. The drugs under the narcotic antitussives are the codeine and hydrocodone. While the non-narcotic antitussives are commonly used in veterinary medicine, include the narcotic agonist antagonist butorphanol and dextrometorphan. These agents do not share addictive properties. The drug under the non-narcotic antitussives are butorphanol, dextrometorphan, and noscapine. Codeine or methylmorphine is one of the most effective drugs available to suppress the cough reflex. Codeine phosphate or codeine sulfate can be used. Compared to morphine, codeine is equally effective as a cough suppressant but is less suppressing to other central centers and causes less constipation. These are the dosages required of codeine on the animals. Falcodine is a codeine derivative and has a longer duration of action. Hydrocodone. It is a more potent antitussive than codeine, but causes less respiratory depression. It is probably the most commonly used antitussive in dogs. Hydrocodone bitartrate is a hydrolysis product of dihydrotibane. As I said earlier, Hydrocodone is more potent than codeine. Drugs under the non-narcotic antitussives Butorphanol 
it is an opioid agonist antagonist with more potent analgesia than morphine and antitussive action than codeine. Buterfenol tartrate is a potent antitussive when given orally or parenterally in dogs and cats. Dextrometorphan It is a semi-synthetic derivative of opium which lacks its narcotic properties. Sedation is unusual following its use. Only the class 1 isomer has antitussive activity which is similar to codeine in potency. It is generally used in small animals, safely in cats. The combination of dextrometorphan and bronchodilator is a superior combination as compared to dextrometorphan alone. The action of dextrometorphan are not through opioid receptors. It may be directly depressing the cough center. It is the dextroisomer of liverfanol with no analgesic and addiction property and it can be used safely in cats. The last drug under the non-narcotic antitussives is the nuscapine. Nuscapine is a benzylisokinoline opium alkaloid having smooth muscle relaxant with neither narcotic nor addiction properties but has antitussive action like codeine and it causes histamine release in large doses. Expectorants Expectorants are drugs which increases the fluidity and volume of bronchial pulmonary secretions and help in their easy expulsion through coughing. These drugs also help in promoting pulmonary drainage during inflammation of respiratory tract such as pneumonia and bronchitis. Expectorants are classified based on their mode of action, such as inhalant expectorants, ingested expectorants, saline expectorants, demulcent expectorants, and mucolytic expectorants. Inhalant expectorants Water steam, benzoin, and volatile oil such as eucalyptus and turpentine. It increases bronchial secretion by a direct local action and gives relief in chronic respiratory diseases. It promotes repair and chronic inflammatory processes in respiratory tract and consists of aromatic compounds that irritates the respiratory passages causing hyperemia. These agents are either heated or dissolved in steaming water that are intended for inhalation in a confined air space. Ingested, reflex, or nauseant expectorants. They are all administered by mouth and some are nauseant, which can induce vomiting, but are administered in subemetic doses. Others are absorbed from the guts and are excreted at least in part via bronchial mucosa. These agents increase respiratory secretions due to their nauseant effect and thereby loosen a dry, harsh cough. Examples include ipicac and antimonipotassium tartary. Saline expectorants. These expectorants reflexly increase mucus secretion after oral administration. These are all excreted in bronchial secretion after oral administration and causes expectorant action. Examples include ammonium chloride, potassium iodide, and sodium iodide. Demulcent expectorants. These have smoothening effect on the respiratory tract mucosa and thus reduce its irritation. Examples include syrups. Mucolytic expectorants. These make bronchial secretion easier to propel by ciliary action or to expel by coughing and in this way reduce cough frequency. They can be regarded as expectorants although their major action is not that of increasing the volume of secretions or diluting to viscous secretions. Bronchodilators 
are drugs which relax the smooth muscles of broken, cause the repetition of respiratory passage, and help in the relieving broken asthma and acute respiratory distress. Acute asthma may be due to hyperparasympathomimetic activity or liberation of excess histamine. Autocoins like 5-HP or serotonin and prostaglantin. LP or leukotrins are also involved in the genesis of asthmatic attacks. In all the instances, it is the basic cause of intense constriction of bronchi. Classification based on the mode of action in relaxing the bronchi. A. Symptomatics, beta, and then the or agonists. Examples are salbutamol, erbutalin, mobuterol, salmeterol, fofenoterol, erbutalin, and etc. Ephedrine and epinephrine are life saving in allergy or anaphylaxis. B2 receptor agonists most affect the bronchodilator it can agonize the airway constriction regardless of the stimulus. Example, epidrine. B. Santin, metal santin. Examples are eophilin and aminophilin. Aside from bronchodilator effect, it also inhibits the mast cell degradation. Eophilin it elevates the strength of the respiratory muscles, thus only minute work is needed for breathing. Letter C. Anti-cholinergic. Act by blocking cholinergic muscarinic receptor. Example, hypertrophic bromide. It causes greatest bronchodilation with these side effects. We are uh, an antihistamine or H1 antagonist. Examples are promethacin and diphenhydramine. Letter E, mask cell stabilizer, example chromolin. It inhibits the calcium influx to the mast cells, which prevent the mast cell degradation and the release of histamine and other inflammatory mediators. It is used in horses 18 mg inhalation with the help of a mask. F are cystinin leukotrin receptor antagonists. Examples are saphir lucas and multilucas. They act by preventing the leukotrin induced bronchoconstriction. G are anti-inflammatory agents. Synthetic analogs of glucocorticoids. Examples are Beclometazole, Dipropionate, Budesolide, and Fructicazole or Pionate. It is used in land through inhalers. This act may reduce the formation of cytokines, inhibits the formation of thromboxane, LEC4, and LED, and leukocyte chemotoxin LED and EAF. In chronic asthma cases in land, prednisone is used orally, along with above inhalers or in, or in status asthmaticus, IV, hydrocortisone is also recommended. Prednisolone is used in horses 0.5 to 1 mg per kg orally on alternate days. When in cats, it is used 1 mg per kg per day. For the relief from chronic pulmonary obstructive disease in horse, synthetic corticosteroid analogs are used. Examples are budenoside, beclometazole, dipropionate, flunisolide, and etc. It is used in inhaler form. Broconelators are also used in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in horses. Respiratory stimulants. 
These are drugs that help in stimulation of depressed respiration that is associated with excess dosage of anesthetics. Based on mode of action, they are classified into two groups such as local or reflex stimulants and analeptics. Local or reflex stimulant. It is through an inhalation of ammonia gas from a strong solution of ammonia or ammonium chloride reflexly stimulates both respiratory or vasomotor centers. Analeptics. Analeptics are drugs which stimulate the depressed medullary respiratory center used for relieving respiratory insufficiency especially due to overdosage of anesthetics or other CNS depressants. Doxaprom It directly stimulates chemoreceptors of the carotid and aortic regions. It also stimulates the medullary respiratory center and considered superior to all combinations of analeptic agents. Nicethamide it is less effective as compared to doxaprom. These respiratory stimulants are of value in reviving the sinking animals as long as the heart continues to beat. And that ends our presentation on the drugs acting on the respiratory system. I hope you learned something.